China are not like in the U.S. because a lot of times when you're eating meals with other people, um, you order a bunch of dishes and you pick and choose from each dish. It's not like each person orders their own dish. So it was kind of hard for me to monitor exactly how big of a portion I was eating. So I think that's really when the problem started and it really escalated once I got into college and I went to London for the year and then was in New York last year. And I would describe my main symptoms as not being able to eat a full meal. And I mean that is in like a regular portion size that I used to be able to eat. I could maybe only finish half in one sitting and I'd have to wait up to an hour or two hours before I could finish the rest. And the reason is I would be very, very full after eating that amount and it seemed like I just wasn't able to really digest my food as well as I used to. Now, um, I wasn't really sure what was causing these problems and instead I just chose to, um, I, I tried cutting out milk because I thought I could have had late onset lactose intolerance. It wasn't really that. Um, I tried to cut out meat, so I cut out all meat and I told you I never used to really eat that much meat. I've never craved meat, so that was pretty easy. And now I would say I eat meat maybe once a week, uh, sometimes even once a month. And if so, it's like very small amounts that are just in like a salad or like pepperoni on a pizza. I never eat steak. I don't really like steak or like really meaty dishes. So it wasn't meat. Um, I would like to say I've kind of cut down my sweet intake sweets just by a little bit, but I, I mean, I haven't cut it fully out because that is like my vice and it's, yeah, I'm really trying to cut that down as well. So all of these problems I talked to my dad about. He's a cancer researcher. He's very, very smart. He studied, he has a PhD in biology and I trust him completely. So I talked to him a lot about my problems and, um, we thought that it might be vascular disease. Now, vascular disease, in a nutshell, is when the plasma in your capillaries, in your stomach, leak out of your capillaries, and when leaked in small quantities, it can be kind of an overall discomfort in your stomach, and then sometimes it will build up and leak in bigger quantities, which will give you an attack, which where you're kind of like immobilized, um, very nauseous, but might not vomit. It's just like that nauseating feeling, indigestion, um, kind of like general feelings that I've been, that I, some general symptoms that I've been feeling. So that's kind of what I felt for the longest time. And that's what we thought it was, but there is no real cure to that. And it's really hard to diagnose because the symptoms are very general. Um, and they're very similar to IBS and other things. So, um, one symptom is low blood pressure, and I do have somewhat low blood pressure. Mine's normally 90-60, which is on the lower end. Normal is like 81-20, in case you were guessing, but, um, yeah, so, uh, I told my dad, I was like, I feel better when I'm playing sports and when I'm doing, like, kind of, like, high-impact activities, and he was like, that makes sense because when you're playing sports, your blood pressure does go up and it releases endorphins and it makes you feel better. So that's kind of like maybe why I'm so addicted to volleyball. I don't know. But that problem has just, just persisted and um, I just didn't really know what was causing it. So uh, I was talking to my physician and, you know, she was like, whoa, have you tried antacids? I was like, I've tried that. Have you tried this? Have you tried that? I've tried all of it. And I was like, I want to do an endoscopy and I want to see if there is anything physically wrong with my stomach. And if not, then it might just be a mental thing. And maybe I should go see a psychiatrist that deals with eating uh, because I really don't want to get an eating disorder and never, I would say never, but no like almost never have I looked at my body in the mirror and thought, wow, I want to be thin. Um, usually I'll look at my body and say, oh, I kind of want to work on my abs or I want some stronger abs. That's really it. And I never, ever diet. Um, at most I try to juice cleanse because I wanted to try it. And, um, I mean, I liked it, but like I didn't do it to lose weight. I did it to try it. So, um, basically the last straw for me was the last two months that I was in Beijing. I actually ended up losing about eight to 10 pounds. I'm not exactly sure because I didn't weigh myself before I went to Beijing, but 
my normal weight uh, since the last time I got measured at the hospital was I think 104 or maybe 105 pounds and when they weighed me when I came back to when I was in Beijing when they weighed me I was only 98 pounds and I have not been under 100 pounds since like middle school I want to say so it was very shocking to me and it kind of really scared me because like I said I don't think I need to lose weight and I haven't been dieting so I was like what is causing this dramatic weight loss within two months like that's not normal um, so when I told this to my doctor he said okay we should try and do the upper endoscopy because losing that much weight is a pretty big concern so that leads up to yesterday which is when I got the procedure done so I'm gonna go through with you guys my day and kind of just um, everything that happened so my procedure was scheduled for the morning which is pretty common because you do have to fast so it's easier if you just wake up and then go to the hospital so you're not too hungry um, so we got to the hospital my procedure was scheduled for 10 but they require you to get there an hour early so we got there right at 9 and they booked me really fast um, I have Kaiser insurance in case you're wondering so this could be different for different hospitals or different insurances but for Kaiser this is what I've noticed to be pretty standard is when you get there they book you right away as long as you come on time they're very quick um, I've never had to wait kind of more than 10 minutes over my appointment time which is awesome so I love Kaiser for that so I get there at 9 um, he puts on a little medical band for me and then he leads me to the back and I had to leave all my things with my dad so I did actually have a bag with um, my book and a Gatorade in it because I was like I could read if I was there or I would just like uh, drink Gatorade after and he was like um, we'll give you water after um, you can drink Gatorade when you get home and you'll basically be ready to go so just give all your stuff to your dad so I didn't even have my cell phone um, I gave everything to my dad and before they registered me they actually um, registered who is picking you up so for me it was my father so they asked for his first name the type of car he will be driving because someone rolls you out and they don't want to accidentally put you in the wrong car I guess because you could be quite out of it so they asked for the model of the car and the color and a phone number so that they can call him um, up, like however many minutes before so that he can come pick me up so that's what we did and then I went in so once we got in um, he just took me straight to like one of these makeshift rooms and it was kind of like if you would can imagine um, like a big auditorium and they would split it up by curtains so it was kind of like one curtained off room next to each other next to the other and in each curtained off room there was a bed that rolls and on the bed they give you two bags and a gown and some blankets so for me um, he told me to put one all of my clothes in one bag and my shoes in the other and then I changed into the gown so I had to take off everything except my underwear and with the opening facing back and then I could just kind of lay in bed so I did and then a female nurse came in to ask me some routine questions such as weight height um, just in general what symptoms I've been feeling what other tests have I done um, um, they always ask like a domestic abuse question if I feel safe at home yada yada um, I have an IUD in, which is to prevent pregnancy 100% pretty much, so she didn't have to ask if I was pregnant or not, but usually they will ask you that, and I think that's about all she did, and she did a really good job of kind of calming me down, and she was like, if you have any questions, ask me, um, you know, you don't have to worry, it's a very simple procedure, it lasts 5 to 10 minutes, and um, she was just really good at like asking me questions about myself so that I would be thinking about other things so I really appreciated that and then 
unconscious, you have a gag reflex, and um, so the lidocaine numbs your entire throat so that way you don't have the gag reflex when they put it down your throat. And I was a little anxious about that because I was like, is it gonna taste bad? What if I throw up? Like, I have a terrible phobia of throwing up, so I was like, I'm really, I was like, oh, I was a little anxious, but he was like, it tastes a little gross, but it's totally fine, like, you'll, you'll do fine. And in my mind, I was just like, okay, if you can do a shot of vodka, if you can do a shot of tequila, you can do a shot of lidocaine, all right, Tiffany, you got this. I was like pumping myself up to, to take this shot of lidocaine. So I was laying where like the blanket was above my neck, kind of like this, and the nurse had a syringe full of the gel, and it looked like hair gel, like the clear hair gel, I guess, and he was like, open up. And he shot it into my mouth and it was very thick and mucus like um very very thick and I so it's hard to gargle but you just kind of went like as much as you could and then you swallow um the taste <laughs> was bitter it was definitely bitter but it was also a little sweet so I think they add some sort of sweet sweetener in it so that it's not completely nasty um I didn't like find myself like gagging or like wanting to throw up like it wasn't that bad so I've tasted worse things I would say um it was just the texture was very weird and it was hard to swallow but I swallowed it all and then um I could feel it almost instantly working my throat and it just it felt kind of pleasant almost it was very gradual it wasn't like all of a sudden I like couldn't feel my throat but I swallowed it and once I swallowed it um the anesthetic anesthetist or anesthesiologist um, said for me to lay over completely on my left side in almost a fetal position so he had me lean all the way over and he put a bib right underneath my mouth and he told me um, and then he started to put this mouthpiece on me and um, I was a little drowsy at this point not even from the drugs because they hadn't administered anything I was just kind of tired but it seemed like a black box of like plastic ring that they insert so that your mouth stays open um so they put that and they strapped it on and then he said to um make sure to lean forward and to let my drool just drip out because we don't want you choking on your drool so they kind of have you laying like this and you have your drool drooling out um so at this point he said okay we're gonna go ahead and administer the drugs and i was like all right and um i could feel a very sensation go in through my IV up my arm and straight into my chest and it felt really weird and at this point I started coughing a little and it wasn't like hacking coughing it was very like <laughs> like that's the only way I could describe it and um for, for a minute I was like oh my god am I gonna like throw up or am I gonna like gag on this plastic piece like I thought the lidocaine was to prevent me from gagging um so at this point, I fall asleep, like, bam, straight out, and I'm out like a light, and when I wake up, I'm back in the curtain room, um, in my bed, lying upright, and a nurse is saying my name, and she's kind of gently waking me up, and, um, she says, how are you feeling, and at this point, I just felt really, really tired, um, no nausea, no dizziness at all, just very tired, and the first thing I asked her was, is it normal to cough? when you're on your side and they put the mouth thing in and she was like, it's totally normal. It's because your throat is like getting used to the sensation of the numbing and sometimes your spit can kind of like still go back to your throat so it tickles and that's why you your reflex is to cough. So I don't know why that was the first question I asked her, but I she was like, are you feeling still drowsy? And I was like, I'm very drowsy and I went back to sleep. So I probably slept for another 20 to 40 minutes. I'm not exactly sure. Um, actually, maybe almost an hour, I would say. So then when she woke me up again, I felt a little more awake, and she was like, let's slowly wake you up, and when you can, put on your clothes, and we will put you in a wheelchair, and will you out. Um, so I put on my clothes. Again, I didn't experience any nausea, any dizziness. I, it just felt like I was really tired, like someone had woke me up, and I was like, I just don't want to sleep. Um, so it's just very drowsy. So, um, they helped me and I walked to the wheelchair, oops, and I walked to the wheelchair myself and I sat down and then the guy was kind of like, all right, um, what's your name? I'm Tiffany. And then he was like, do you know who's picking you up? And I, it was just quite 
questions to kind of get me going, I think. And the guy wheeled me out. Um, I believe we went down an elevator, but I don't really remember, so I'm not really sure. Um, because one of the drugs they do give you, part of the anesthesia, is an amnesiac so that you forget um, the procedure and it just helps you cope with being out like a light for like 10 minutes. Um, so I'm pretty sure we did go down an elevator to the first floor and we go out and my dad was waiting there. I remember getting up and them kind of holding me and I got into the car and then I just slept the whole way home. So, um, I was out. By the time we got home, I was a little bit better. I could get out the car by myself and kind of walk to the door myself. And, um, I just remember taking off all my clothes instantly and climbing into bed and I slept for a good three hours, I think. Um, and by the time I woke up around five, that's when I felt actually like, oh, okay, I'm pretty awake now and I was pretty hungry because I hadn't eaten anything. Oh no, actually, sorry. I did eat when I first got home. I did eat a little bit. I ate some porridge and some saltine crackers and I drank a little bit of Gatorade. So I made sure to eat very, like not solid foods. They tell you to eat something light, which is what I ate. And then I slept. And then when I woke up again, I just had a really weird taste in my mouth. I think it was from the lidocaine. And, um, I asked my brother to take me to milk tea, which he very kindly did, so we went to go get milk tea, and then I ate some sushi, and that's kind of what I ate for that day. So, um, that's pretty much my experience, um, and, uh, I, I mean, the results came out negative, I guess, for whatever they were looking for. Um, it didn't seem like there were any problems, which is a good thing, but also kind of a bad thing, because I was really hoping that they would find something wrong, so that I could be like, okay, this is why I've been feeling this way for this long, but as of now, um, he said that the endoscopy seemed clean, it seemed all normal, and I don't know if they took any biopsies, but he will probably email me in the next couple days, 